EAA Chapter 166 in Hartford, Connecticut. It's a home of the Vans RV12. And no, it's not another RV12 build session. You know, Rick, that's been my lead-in for the past several years with these videos. Can't really say it anymore because this airplane is... It's certified and flying. That's right. It's been a busy, busy, busy several weeks. And um, it's actually made a first flight. Came through the inspection with flying colors and came back from the first flight test squawk-free, right? That's right. Yeah, so it was a great, you know, first flight. Um, we basically just orbited the airport here and uh, just checked out all the controls, make sure everything handled well, no unusual behaviors, and uh, then came back in and landed. So it was a, you know, outstanding first flight. Yeah, but, you know, it was a lot of work to get to that stage, and a, a, a lot of the preparation for that first flight uh, is a lot of paperwork, a lot of preparation for dealing with the DAR and the FAA to get an airworthiness uh, sign off. And we thought we'd talk a little bit about uh, that in this video. We'll touch upon the first flight and then in a, a follow-up video, we'll dive deep into the flight testing and uh, talk about what it takes to, to fly off uh, uh, an experimental kit once you've got it flying. All right, so uh, getting ready for the airworthiness certification, uh, there's a lot of work that goes into that. Um, there's, you know, inspecting the aircraft to make sure that it's really ready for that once you're done with the uh, manufacturer. Uh, but then, then there's a lot of paperwork in terms of uh, making your applications for registration to get a tail number, and then the uh, getting the uh, uh, application done and submitted for the airworthiness certificate. So uh, where we started was actually with the uh, production acceptance procedures that we received from Vans Aircraft. That gave us a really good guide to go through and do a thorough inspection on the aircraft. And over at the table, I can show you what that looks like. So basically, here's all the paperwork that you need uh, to prepare for your airworthiness certification uh, and the inspection. But before we get into that, we started off, once we were done with construction, we started with the uh, production acceptance procedures that we received from Vans Aircraft. And in that, um, it's a really good guide. It's a, basically a checklist that you go through and it has you do everything from, you know, systems check, your uh, electrical system, your EFA system, checking your flight controls, seat belts, engine check, the, the whole nine yards, right? And um, this took us actually probably three to four weeks to go through to do a very thorough inspection to make sure that we had actually, the construction was truly complete and actually met the standards that are defined within the kit instructions. And so that's where we started, got that completed, once we were complete, then I uh, put together the application for the airworthiness certification. And um, the FAA has some really good guides. They have a, a website tool that you go to where you actually fill out all the, the, uh, the application and submit it there. And uh, while you're doing that, uh, they request quite a bit of uh, information. So this is a copy of our airworthiness certificate uh, application. So this is the form 8130-6 and uh, you fill that out and then as you're filling that out you also have to provide the FAA with other documents um, supporting the uh, you know your airworthiness application and one of those documents is uh, you have to prepare a, a program letter that accompanies your, your certificate application. And in that, you know, you state that you're, you've completed the, uh, the application, you have your um, registration, which is the 8050-3. Uh, you provide three view drawings of the aircraft. You certify that you've done a weight and balance. And uh, within the weight and balance, maybe that's worth looking at, but within that, you're Basically, you provide them what your empty weight is, what your most um, aft weight CG is, most forward uh, weight CG, and then your flight test, your proposed flight test uh, CG. And uh, so that's provided as part of the package. 
Uh, and then you have to certify that you're not going to use the aircraft for compensation or um, towing gliders, ultralights. And then you got to make sure that uh, you, you certify that you're, you know, you've placarded your aircraft and you have all the proper um, signage in the aircraft as part of that placarding um, activity. And then finally, that uh, you also have that one placard that states that uh, provides the passenger warning. Essentially that, you know, this is an experimental aircraft and doesn't comply with federal safety regulations. So that's all part of the um, uh, airworthiness certification application process. And there's a good guide out there that the FAA provides. It's the uh, Code of Fed Federal Regulations. Uh, if you look up this document, 21.190. Um, it, it's basically, you know, the, the handbook on what's required to uh, get your airworthiness certification. But what I found probably most useful is there's a table at the very back. And this table provides a list of what the documents are that are, must be uh, provided for review uh, when you submit your application or must be available during the actual inspection. Right, so they have every class of uh, uh, or type of aircraft listed within here to get the certification. Ours, of course, we certified it as an ELSA kit built. So you just follow that column down and you look at what all is required. There's required documentation and then there's documentation that must be available during the actual inspection. So this gives you that you know, entire list of what's required. So, like I said, we, we did the thorough inspection, then I submitted the application. Um, from the time I submitted the application to actual inspection date, which happened exactly one week ago today, we had the DAR come out. Um, that took about uh, six weeks, um, five weeks, and that was just due to a number of number of things um, you know FA had people that weren't available and so on but we finally got to that date the thing that the DAR was looking at so I guess we'll switch to now the actual inspection um, I gotta say the DAR we worked with was great answered all of our questions um, ahead of time and uh, was good about working with, with us in terms of time and date um, and when he came out, he actually came with an, an individual from the FISDO. Uh, that individual was uh, getting training on how to perform these inspections. So he was a, a uh, aviation safety inspector that came along. But um, the DAR was looking for, he told me ahead of time, he wanted to see the, uh, the kit build instructions. He wanted to see the uh, POH weight and balance, um, the aircraft logbooks, and uh, he also wanted to verify that we had completed um, the, any safety directives and that those had been complied with. The overall inspection of, took about um, two hours. They, they arrived at 8 a.m. We started the aircraft. That was the very first thing we did to show the, the engine works. And then, um, then took the spinner and cowling off, and uh, then they went to work uh, just looking over the aircraft, and they really focused on the controls, uh, making sure that all the linkages were good, all the safety wire was in place, turnbuckles had their clips, um, the rivets that, were, that they could visually see were good in terms of how they were set. And, um, you know, any uh, fiber nuts, uh, that were in place uh, had the proper amount of thread showing. So they did a very thorough inspection. And then after two hours of inspection, uh, they gave us our airworthiness certificate. So uh, overall, it was a great day. And we, right after that, we went out and celebrated uh, uh, because there was a lot of work going into getting that certification. So I'd say with that, um, we could then uh, talk a little bit about our first flight. So we did that exactly three days after our um, airworthiness certification. 
inspection. So a few days later, uh, the weather was really good in the morning. So we all got up very early about, uh, uh, we all showed up here about 6 a.m. Got the airplane ready, did our pre-flight. We did a really thorough pre-flight again, just making sure all those linkages were, you know, tight and all the controls worked correctly. Um, then went out and basically we stayed in the pattern, uh, but above the airspace here. So we're in a class Delta, um, you know, airspace for this airport and took off, climbed out. We initially did a, a, a with the permission of ATC, a low pass over the runway to make sure everything, you know, we had ground observers as well supporting us. They were looking at the aircraft and photographing it as we passed by. And then we climbed out above the airspace for the, uh, the airport here. And uh, we just did some loops around the airport for about 40 minutes, um, checking the controls. And we were actually using the EAA test cards for that, that first flight. And that's another great resource that uh, everyone should be using for their uh, flight phase one flight test program. Um, it gives you, a, it, there, I think there's like 21, 22 test cards, and each one breaks down what you're exactly doing. Um, so like the very first flight, you're just testing the controls. Do you see any unusual responses as you're, you know, banking or using the rudders, um, you know, deploying your flaps, things like that. So that's what we're going to be doing over the next several weeks to finish the flight test program. Um, Per the FAA, an ELSA aircraft only needs five hours and five takeoff and landings for the phase one flight test program, but we're using the EAA test cards and uh, we're gonna go through that. And I suspect that's probably gonna take us more like uh, 20 to 30 hours to complete that test program. Because we wanna make sure this aircraft, we understand its behavior throughout its flight envelope. So uh, that's what we're gonna be working on for the next few weeks. And uh, um, hopefully we'll be able to include some video of our actual flight test uh, in an upcoming update.